You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 9th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from just outside the building where Representative Rodney Davis is currently hiding under his desk, praying no one asks him about the racist in chief. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. At last we meet, <laughs> as if by fate. Um, this has been a very screwed up day technologically in our little home here. Yes, it has. Um, yeah. The the good people at Microsoft uh, decided I needed an operating system update. And uh, I didn't, I, I had waved that aside the last couple of times that the notification came up. Before we do our podcast, we always reboot our machines because we're good people. And, uh, uh, it decided, oh, this is great. I walked away and I came back and I was in the middle of a ne- do not shut your computer off. This is going to take a really long time. So we're actually recording this late on Friday. And my little laptop has been updating for the last 40 minutes. Oh, longer than that. An hour. And it's not even halfway done. So then came the panic, <laughs> which is, how do we get the podcast done? Which is a not of tremendous interest ever anyone so my wife placed a call to the state of washington to speak to junior dude uh to get the password for junior dude's laptop but junior dude's laptop is turns out incredibly slow and doesn't have a um ethernet plug in it and then youngest child came to the rescue as if an angel had landed upon her shoulder and said be nice to the old people today (laughs) because they're having a really shitty day and she said, perhaps my MacBook Air would be sufficient. And you know what? It yeah, was. I didn't pay for that um, MacBook Air. I don't pay for computers that are more expensive than my car. But it was a gift from her dad, birthday gift from her dad, and it's working. So that we're grateful for that. It's yeah. working. And here it is Friday. So let's jump right into yeah, it, shall we? we? It's racism week. I, I thought it was infrastructure it really week, is. but it's racism week at the... No. Uh, no, White it's... House. And it turned out uh, Morning Joe this morning said Republicans are starting to freak out about it. So, yeah, uh, that's good. You know, good but, you them. know, it, it'll be fine because Democrats won't nominate a centrist. So uh, it'll be just right. fine. Right. Yeah. And anyone who Democrats nominate uh, is automatically right. not a centrist because <laughs> they're a Democrat. So it's real simple. The formula is very simple. Once again, as we've mentioned many times, we've already run this experiment for eight years with Barack Obama, a centrist, cooperate, calm, humane, um, get along with Republicans to a fault person. And Mitch McConnell just fucked him over and that laughed about it the whole way because Mitch McConnell knew his own party. He knew the Republican Party was a racist dung heap who, who were already already fucked in the head um, from 30 years of Rush Limbaugh. I want to say something about Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell's done a fantastic job. Sure. At his job of ensuring that job. minority white supremacist mm-hmm. rule maintains power over the next four decades. He's done everything he can mm-hmm. within his his position yes. to make sure that the minority controls the country so hats Mm -hmm. off to you you know we're gonna have to change the way we do democracy in order to undo what you did yes indeed and and you and i had a conversation last night we had a very nice dinner we did and uh had a long conversation about two things one is how do we make sure there's never another trump again Mm -hmm. which isn't really our job but we are the ones that were we democrats are going to be the ones that have to do that And the other thing is, how much are we willing to disrupt democratic institutions and media institutions in order to fix this? Well, I I was listening to another podcast today. Um, I actually was listening to Ezra Klein interview the author of American Carnage, and I'm not going to go into great depth about it, but he did recount one conversation he had overheard or been told about or learned about Mitch McConnell, a speech Mitch McConnell gave, I think Ezra Klein said in 2014, 
because uh, you know everyone was just hanging themselves on the right uh, because Obamacare was rammed down our throats, um, which is by any objective measure completely bull- bullshit. There were year- there were two years of hearings, endless amendments. The Obama Care, the Affordable Care Act, was parsed to to a fare thee well. I'm going to interrupt you for just a moment, and and so that people know when Drift Glass is talking about American Carnage, he's talking about a book by Tim Alberta, American Carnage on the Front Lines of the Republican Civil War and the Rise of President Trump. Yes, I am. Tim Alberta is with Politico, and he's been on all of the cable news shows. Yes. And if you don't have $28.50 to buy his book, you can just go read a post of mine from 2006 <laughs> called Reactionary, which is exactly what, yeah, for 13 years ago, which is exactly what he wrote. Uh, his book is, as I recall, 688 pages. Mine is one single blog post from 2006, and it says exactly what he said 13 years later. Um, and believe me, that is a sort of much amusement and frustration in our household 13 years later everyone's going oh my god look what happened how could we have known this who could have told us so if you want to save yourself 30 bucks go read it's, my post it's actually 17.99 uh, at walmart so oh well see, there you go yeah. if you want to buy at walmart and <laughs> i don't and, shop at walmart and, but that's and, and bury this country <laughs> yeah. even further go right ahead um but the conversation they had was a was a speech by mitch mcconnell uh, who was who was following on with the hysteria over the Affordable Care Act and how Barack Obama had wrecked every democratic institution by cramming this thing down our throats. That was a big, you might remember, Republican expression during that era was, down our throats, things are crammed. Everything was crammed mm-hmm. down their throats. And Mitch McConnell said, you know what, if I ever put out a health care plan, I'm going to make it so fucking open and transparent and democratic, you won't believe it. I will, I will, and if, you know what, if I can't get a bipartisan plan through, we're not going to do anything at all because bipartisanship is just that important. And he laughed when he said it because everyone knew he was lying. Everyone knew he was lying. And that's the part that's maddening. It's not that Mitch McConnell is great at his job. His, his job is to re- resurrect the Confederacy and make it a permanent uh, noose around the throat of American democracy. That's what Mitch McConnell's, and he's doing a great job of it. The the part where the analysis ends is, okay, where does Mitch McConnell and where did Donald Trump get his power from? And the answer is from the Republican base, who were willing to burn the place down because Barack Obama was elected president and was willing to applaud Mitch McConnell for his, his, uh, his fealty to the Constitution and were willing to turn on a dime the minute... Donald Trump was elected and and toss all that shit over the side. And we saw that happen during the Bush administration. All the shit they said about Clinton, they cast aside during Bush years. All the shit they said during the Bush years, they kicked, they, they immediately tossed over the side when Obama was elected. So the question for me is, how do we get rid of these fucking Republican base voters? How do we neutralize them? And that actually was what Chris Hayes said last night. He finally came out and said the problem with this country is the Republican Party. And if you want to fix this country, you're going to have to find a way to destroy the Republican Party peacefully, uh, nonviolently, electorally. But we're going to have to find a way to destroy the Republican Party. And you and I had that long conversation last night. And David Frum has a very short tweet that prompted our conversation where he said, when this is all over, nobody will admit to ever having supported it. And Mitch, uh, uh, Chris Hayes uh, had an equally short reply, which was, I thought that about the Bush administration, and yet here we are. And you know what? The history of your blog and mine and this podcast and all the work we've done is has documented how we got from the Bush administration to here. That really is our body of work for the last 14, 15 years. And the place where I always come down is, you can always tell when things are about to go horribly wrong is when the worst people in the world start talking about how both sides were to blame. That's always the telltale. That is the thing that will always tell you, oh, I guess we're about to hit some really big wall of shit because everyone on the right and way too many people in the middle who 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 knew that Mitch McConnell was lying, who know they're lying when they open their mouth and say both sides do it, are now reciting that as an incantation against any um, attacks from you know the crazy liberal lefty liberals. 
And I'd like to go through a few of those if you'd like. Sure. I thought we'd take turns. Please. Absolutely. You go right ahead. Why? Why do I have to start with Marco Rubio? I don't want to talk about Marco Rubio. I'm not Marco Rubio. Okay. You Would be you like? Marco Rubio. All right. Well, the next one is Matt Walsh, which is a post of mine, which I can't oh, I get see. to because okay. I'm on a different right, computer. All right. So. I'll be Marco Rubio. Uh-huh. You'd be Marco, Marco Rubio. Rubio said the tweet was wrong and the chant last night grotesque. The left-wing politicians and many in the media demanding outrage are self-righteous hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And the outrage and response cycle allows for only two sides and demands you pick or else. It's a stupid game that I refuse to play. So he's not going to choose to call Donald Trump's comments racist, I guess. And you and I might recall that the last time Marco Rubio was on The Daily Show, with not John the last Stewart. time, not the last time. He, I'm sure he's been on since then, but there was a time that he was on The Daily Show with John Stewart where every single answer to every question was both sides, both sides of the aisle, the other side mm -hmm. and both sides. And it was a, it was just like his preparation answers that Chris Christie called him out for later mm -hmm. in the Republican debate. Which it is, was a, you know, he, ha he has rehearsed answers because he's as dumb as a stump. And you and I have said for years that Marco, since that interview, that Marco Rubio is as dumb as dry toast. He is. And uh, there were a lot of people in the, in the uh, <laughs> presidential campaign who didn't believe us that he was no. that stupid until no. Chris oh, Christie the, called him out. And I went, yeah, you know, we were right. The cover of Time magazine was yeah. the, sa the, the Republican savior. It was going to be Mark. Uh, David Brooks announced, "Don't worry, it's going to be Rubio. Well, it's going to be Rubio. Absolutely. It's definitely going to be Rubio." And I, I'll tell and you something that there is a a level of disbelief in the media, and I'm sh I I do believe that David Brooks is largely responsible for this, mm -hmm. uh, and people like him. That if a Republican is elected, then they must have a certain modicum of intelligence. Sure, and follow that was the assumption made about Sarah Palin. Was well, she was elected governor of Alaska. She must right. know that Africa is a continent and not a country, she, right? She she must not be a complete idiot. No, no, she got and that's elected. what happens. Right. That's what happens when you you have a collection of pundits who are as localized and 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 cage fed and inbred mm -hmm. as a as a petri dish full of amoeba, all living together, all rubbing shoulders with each other, all living in D.C., all going to the same cocktail parties all swapping spit with each other, all wiping each other's noses with each other's shirt tails. They all reach the same opinion. And the opinion is always wrong. Yeah. And the people who actually know what the Republican Party has doing, been doing, is doing, plan to do in the future are people who live out in the country where Republicans talk openly about this shit. Well, and, and, and the, I want, someone did kind of call me out on Twitter today, and I, want, I did appreciate it to say, mm -hmm. you know, black voters have known longer than you. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no. Right. Absolutely. You know, this, this, is, isn't, this it didn't germinate at the no. Drift Class Blue Gal household. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, absolutely not. And I will. Uh, you're absolutely right. And uh, there's nothing for me to uh, to add to that other than this gives white liberal America a taste of what it's like to have been black all along yeah. Yeah. in America. Right. No, this is ab no, absolutely agree. And this is just because we have a podcast and we are this is our subject matter. And we really are experts on the Republican Party, but we really do understand what they were, what they are, where they are going, why they are going there, what strategies they're going to use to get there, and what strategies they're going to use to deflect attention from the fact that they are a shit heap of bigots and imbeciles, and they always have been. And the number one go-to position when they are in panic mode, when they have gone to DEFCON 5, when there's got there's no place left to go, there's no place left to hide, is exactly where they went after the Bush administration collapsed, which is, isn't it a shame that both sides do it, blue gal? Isn't it a shame how the left and the right got the Iraq war so wrong? Isn't it a shame? And it, and it is, again, it, it would be the ravings of a lunatic on public transportation if it weren't for the fact that they had the multi-billion dollar might of the mainstream media behind them legitimizing them and every one of their colleagues nodding in agreement wearing a suit and a tie or a nice dress going no he's right and that david brooks he's so smart my gosh that michael gerson he's wise jesus that david from you know and you know they all have books you know they're they're all 
bylined, respectable columnists in respectable newspapers. So maybe we should shut the fuck up and not listen to those crazy hippies and listen to these guys, even though they've never been right about a fucking thing in their entire life. So we know the crisis is upon us because noted Daily Wire scumbag Matt Walsh uh, this week uh, just it went off on both sides. It's a, I have a post at my blog. I'm sorry I can't reference it directly. But the, the glory of it was him saying that uh, Ilyan Omar is disloyal to America back in May. Um, two months later, after the Donald Trump uh, Nuremberg two-minute speech rally, he's like, you know what? This has gone too far on both sides. Both sides are, are led by irresponsible demagogues and why can't the reasonable people ever get together and solve fucking problems and you know what the first problem is you work for the goddamn daily wire (laughs) the second problem is someone actually pays you to shit on a piece of paper and turn it into a column and does it over and over and over again you shouldn't have a fucking job if your opinion is that stupid if it's that wrong but you can always tell when these guys are up against it because their, their go-to position is, please forget what I literally wrote two months ago, and let's just talk about how both sides are to blame. And over to you for Mitch McConnell, Mitch honey. McConnell, you know, both, all of us, really, all of us need to lower the temperature drift, guys. Right, right. And, and that was following the people of color remarks, <laughs> I believe. Yeah. And, and Mitch McConnell was asked about, uh, doesn't you, your wife, I mean, didn't Donald Trump just insult your wife and Mitch McConnell just... Rece- he retracted away. into yeah. his turtle yeah, shell, rolled over on his back, and his staff carried him away uh, because he knows that works. Um, smirking human stool sample, Noah Rothman, uh, who walks into the barber shop, I'm convinced, once a week and says, can you make me look like even more of a punchable asshole? And the barber says, you know what? I can't. I can't do it. You've reached the theoretical upper limit of assholery. There's no further place for you to go. And Noah Rothman just smiles and leaves and is satisfied knowing that he's achieved the perfection. He's, he's achieved peak Noah Rothmanism. And yet, for some reason, probably because he writes for Commentary Magazine, he's on Morning Joe three days a week making the rest of America ill. And here's what Noah Rothman had to say. Trump is committed to racial antagonism. So, too, are the squad in their own special way. Responsible voices are cowed. No one is going to intervene in this blood sport, and it's all going to get so much Mm -hmm. worse. And you know what, Noah? I hope it does. I really hope it does. Because once the hippies start punching back, these guys are all fucking cowards. They're all headed for the hills. All right. Next one is Matt Schlapp. Are you really talking about the Matt Schlapp that was the uh, Brooks Brothers rioter in 2000? Is that the one? Yeah. Matt Schlapp, who had the audacity. This is where I saw... um, Michael Steele actually choke on his spit um, <laughs> talking about how the Republican party, that's not racist and that's not racist. And, and Michael Steele who made a living right, fronting right. for a racist party because they paid him money, finally couldn't stand it anymore. And just, and, and Matt, but Matt Schlapp's in wife works House. in the Trump And White he's House. the one that screamed yeah. and yelled and stomped and banged on the door in Florida as part of the Brooks brothers riot. Mm-hmm to get the vote counters to stop counting votes in Broward County, Florida, where there, where mm-hmm. it is majority black voters and, uh, yep. and yep. staged a protest and made up entirely of Bush personnel to make it look like it Bust was, it was an absolute rack mm-hmm. fucking exercise to make it look like the American public wanted the vote count to stop. And so Mm -hmm. uh, this week, Matt Schlapp said, no one should be bullied. You know, don't bully anybody. Let's just be nice. This Mm -hmm. must, quote, this must stop. Stop saying you're going to impeach the motherfucker. Stop saying Pelosi marginalizes you because of her bigotry. Stop making Jews feel unsafe. Stop comparing law enforcement to Nazis. Just stop. No, I'm no. not going to stop okay. saying impeach no. the motherfucker. I'm not going to st- stop comparing ICE agents who make a three-year-old choose between her parents feel uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable when you compare uh, people who use Gestapo tactics to the Gestapo. Right. I'd rather right. you just look the other way and pretend that it's not happening like the rest of us. Right. Um, now, when both sides do it fail, there's some Republicans who are just incapable of of going to the fence and straddling it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and Liz Cheney is one of those people because this w- this week was a bumper crop of both siderism and flat out denialism. There's a there's a whole YouTube of Republicans just swearing that it wasn't racist, it wasn't intentional, he didn't mean it that way. Donald Trump tried to stop the people from chanting um, that it was that Donald Trump wasn't even there. It was a hologram. It was all a dream. Um, and just obvious, 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 childish, desperate, pathetic lies and. And uh, but Liz Cheney just out and out said, just ignored the whole issue. Our opposition to our socialist colleagues is not about race, gender, religion. It's about their dangerous policies. They aim to steal power from the people and give it to the government. They embrace anti-Semitism, open borders, late-term abortion, and always blame America. Yeah, well, it's not a, it's not about their race or gender. It's about issues. So let's talk about issues like they're all late-term baby killers. Right. That's a real issue. Yeah. That happens. All, and they, they always blame America. And Liz Cheney, again, if I could just pin her eyes open uh, um, um, clockwork orange style and force her to watch Donald Trump's entire campaign, yeah. which is America is a fucked up nation that's been destroyed. It's not even worth talking about. Our cities are a disaster. Everything's fucked. What? Why not vote for me? We're screwed anyway. That was his whole pitch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wish he'd go back to the country where he came from. Mm. But as I noted last week, the country he came from was defeated by the Union Army in 1865. 1865 was that country's demise. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Finally, Steve Scalise. Tonight's disapproval yes. resolution serves no one and fixes nothing. It div- You're being divisive. It Don't divides divide our nation and distracts us from addressing the issues the American people sent us here to solve. Like baby mm-hmm. killing. Like baby and, and socialism. <laughs> And Mm -hmm. socialism. Why can't we talk about those issues? Right. It's time Uh House Democrats started focusing on the real problems facing Americans, like building the wall. (laughs) Whoa, why can't we have a nice wall? Why, Blue Gal? I want my wall. No, the wall's finished. The wall's done. Yeah. The wall's done. We don't have to worry about it. The wall's done. Did you hear? The wall's done. There isn't one extra brick up on that wall. Not one. Nope, that's not true. Fake news, fake Fake news, fake news. Now you scream fake news. Yeah. Now, what Steve Scalise fails to comprehend is that the problem that this American sent uh, his vote to Washington to solve is Steve Scalise. Yeah. <laughs> um, S- Steve Scalise is the problem. The Republicans are the problem. It's, it, it is, it is, we're so far beyond dickering over minimum wage increases and taxes, et cetera. No, the Republican Party is the problem. And I'm voting every time I can lay my hands on a ballot for someone, for enough people to go to Washington and flush these scumbags out of the pipes of the American government. That's the problem we need to solve, the problem of the Republican Party, period. And so, Steve Scalise, you're the problem. So shut the fuck up. Uh, I know you. I know who you're talking to. You're talking to people stupid enough to vote for Steve Scalise, and good for you. That's why we have a free country. But uh, no, you're the problem, Scalise. You and people like you and Cheney and Schlapp and Rothman and McConnell and Walsh and Rubio and the other Joe Walsh today on Twitter and on. And you people are the problem. You people are what's wrong with this country. And until you people are pried out of power and flushed out of our system, we're going to have this shitty conversation over and over again week after week. Um, all across the country, because um, there's no solution to any problem until the Republican Party is out of power. And by out of power, I mean completely. No White House, no Senate, no House. And that's going to take a long time. And it's going right. to be very frustrating. And it's, there's, we're going to have a lot of setbacks. But we have to start forcing candidates to talk about the Republican Party as the problem, not particular policies, which I which I also agree with them on. So that was this week in, in both sides. Of the list is much, 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 much longer, as you might imagine. But it's it's the fact that flat-out denialism and both siderism is always a harbinger of the fear, uh, the terror these people are feeling that something very bad is about to happen. They need to duck for cover. And for cover, they will duck under anything. Also this week, uh, just today, David Brooks wrote a column in which he uh, talked about Donald Trump as a singular unitary villain. The title of David Brooks's article was Donald Trump Hates America, who came out of nowhere. No one knows who elected him. No one knows what primary process he went through. There's no discussion of, of who supports him. The word Republican appears nowhere in this column. It's just there's, there's Donald Trump on one side and America on the other. 
And on on the Donald Trump side, Donald Trump has these horrible plans and this terrible vision and it's terrifying. But America uh, is full of inspirational quotes about what we should be and we could be if we just put our minds to it. And I just looked at this and I looked at the number of people on Twitter who thought this was a brilliant column. Oh, my God, it really touched me. Oh, thank God David Brooks is there to tell us the truth. I'm like, no, asshole. The entire Republican Party hates America. What David Brooks is doing is not destroying Donald Trump. He is desperately trying to save the shitty party that he's a part of. He's trying to build a big-ass lifeboat in which Republicans somehow aren't responsible for the person they nominated and elected. It's entirely Donald Trump's fault. And it will disappear when he does. And that is the same fucking lie David Brooks has been telling in one form or another for his entire adult life. And I do not understand to this day why none of his colleagues will mention the fact that this is the same lie he's been telling and getting away with for decades. I don't know. I we don't need understand. to switch gears real quick and yes. uh, just mention briefly, because I'm kind of tired of mentioning it, but every week I think from now until election day, mm -hmm. we're going to have an example of a never Trumper suggesting how Democrats should run their party. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I really do. And, and I realize that Tom Friedman thinks of himself now as a Democrat, which is hilarious. Not welcome in our party, Tom. Not... <laughs> There are some people we will welcome into our party. Sure. A lot of people. Uh, a lot of people. I don't want to welcome Tom Friedman into our party, mm -hmm. but uh, he was on, he had a column this week, right? In the Washington Post, I believe it was. I, I No, he's a New York Times columnist. Oh, New York Times. He had it in New yeah. York Times. He's and, a, a Schulzberger family you gotta retainer. Choose. You got to choose between revolution and getting elected because you want to defeat Donald Trump. Uh, just wait on all that revolutionary stuff. Wait on health care. Mm -hmm. Don't do health care. Don't, don't do raise it. my taxes. Please don't yeah. touch my stuff. Don't yeah. touch my. Well, he he feels now that, you know, instead of talking about cutting up the pie more fairly, which granted we do need to do, mm -hmm. uh, he said from his multi-million dollar throne. Uh, yeah. But really, why aren't we talking about making the pot bigger? Why aren't we talking about entrepreneurship? We should be talking about mm -hmm. more about entrepreneurship. And of course, uh, Brian Williams gave him the, the tongue bath that Brian Williams is famous for. Oh, uh, God. I was watching this and I was up way too late and I understand that sleep can have something to do with your mood, but really I was ready for <laughs> self-harm at this point. I yeah. was just, I know you, so, you were really, I didn't want yeah. to talk to you. I didn't want to talk to any, I just said, I hate everybody. Just go away. Don't talk to me. You were, you were mm -hmm. worried about me. You said, do I, I need to worry about you? No, you don't need to worry about me, but I'm ready to stab somebody. So just step okay. back five faces, please. My TV husband, Ellie Mistal, uh -huh. saved my life that night because he, he was just as mad at Tom Friedman <laughs> as I was. And I thought, okay, I'm not alone in this. Mm -hmm. The white privilege uh, of Tom Friedman came shining forward mm -hmm. and uh, telling, the, telling the Democratic Party what, that, uh, you know, don't elect a Democrat. And right. also no. Eugene Robinson uh, had to break it to never Trumpers that the Democratic Party is going to nominate a Democrat. And you're just going to have to get over it. It just... And they wept bitter tears. But I really because... just want to choose both sides because really, we mm -hmm. don't need to divide America between Republicans and Democrats. Let's make them both Republicans and then I won't have to decide. That really is the argument. If you could convert um, uh, David Brooks columns and Tom Friedman columns and Andrew Sullivan columns yeah. to, to a large extent, not exclusively, into like a, a cartoon flip book where every page is a day for the last 20 years. Yeah. They would have one figure on it who never fucking moves. Mm -hmm. It just stands there, the stares figure. at you. They just absolutely <laughs> center. It got to be in the center. And it doesn't matter what happens around them. It doesn't matter how how broadly things shift. It doesn't matter that we elected an actual fascist. It doesn't matter that the Republicans were in chanting, send her back. The only, send her the back. The only blip that I would see in that flip book would be uh, Katrina. Yeah, for a minute. You're right. For a For hot a minute, minute they David said, Brooks said, this is just an utter failure of right. the Bush administration. Right. And there's no way to sugarcoat it. They right. failed. Right. And that was it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, and I'm, I was, I was, I was blogging back then. I wrote a column saying, I said, I would write a column that is positive about David Brooks. If he ever did something other than just suck Republican dick. And he actually did today. And here's my column saying, you're absolutely right. David Brooks, he will never do it again. And he because hasn't. he is he's morally <laughs> incapable of being honest. He's mm -hmm. he is. Th this is the the part that gasses me is that 
if he did anything else, it wouldn't bother me. But he, he not only he writes these shitty columns for the most influential newspaper in the world, but he spends his time standing behind podiums, wringing his hands and moralizing about, about humility and kindness and how we all need to be more generous, all of which would be very legitimate messages if they didn't come out of the mouth of someone who just fucking lied all the time about the most important political issues in the country when that one thing is his one job. Right. That's what drives me up the fucking wall. That's we have about time for one more uh, topic before we move Whoa. to our news roundup. May I suggest? Um, so I was going to say deficits. Oh, please go. Go for it. This is the week that all of a sudden Republicans have decided deficits don't matter out yeah. loud. Yeah. And someone on Fox and Friends <laughs> didn't get the memo. I know. Just, it was funny. <laughs> they decided to open up the questions to the audience with Stuart Varney and Charles Payne being on Fox and Friends. And how cute this is going to be. And the questioner in the audience had not gotten the memo that when a Republican is president, mm -hmm. you never ask about the deficit because nobody cares about the deficit. Even Trump's office of management and budget director doesn't care about the deficit. The only person you mean Mick Mulvaney, <laughs> Mick Mulvaney. who made an entire career out of screaming about the deficit. You mean that Mick Mulvaney? That Mick Mulvaney told uh, mm -hmm. a reporter before the state right. of the union address this year. Yeah. Nobody cares, nobody cares nobody about cares. that. Is he going to mention anything about the deficit? Nobody cares about that. Yeah. The only yeah. person who cares about the deficit at this moment is Steve Mnuchin because he has to right. get a debt ceiling increase passed through the Congress and, and somehow slip it into the papers that Donald Trump signs off on, uh, hide it so that it gets signed because, you know, otherwise the American economy collapses. But and I'm not going to get into the whole fact that the, the debt ceiling is unconstitutional. But yeah, so so somebody asked uh, from the audience about, well, you know, in the country, we're kind of concerned about the deficit, which has exploded under the Trump tax scam, the GOP tax scam, of course. And you're not supposed to ask about this. And Brian Kilmeade decided to reflect <laughs> the question back to the audience. You're right. Despite the success of President Trump, uh, we are run running a huge deficit, aren't we? <laughs> and so then uh, Varney kind of said, grunted, yeah, yeah, we are. And Kimmy said, so the next president really has got to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just left a huge shit in the sink. <laughs> Someone's going to have to clean that up. I don't know who's going to have to clean it up, but man, I took a huge dump in that sink. And oh, I pity the poor next poor guy who's going to have to go in there and scoop that out because uh, is the bar open? Yeah. So, yeah, so you know what Charles Payne said? I, I bet you oh. can guess. Oh. You know what? Neither party is talking about it too much. And so excited about the deficit in both sides. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah, let's be honest about that. Neither party is talking about it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, let's just admit that it's way over Donald Trump's head to do anything about it and move on. Yeah. Well, do you remember Donald Trump's original genius plan for dealing with the debt and the was, deficit? Was to just write it off. We're going to declare bankruptcy. We're going to do a big national bankruptcy. It's worked for me 10 times. And you know what? We're going to have a bankruptcy. We're going to declare bankruptcy as a country. And we're going to get China to take 10 cents on the dollar. That's what it's we're going to be do. Easy. Because that is, the, that is the only financial universe Donald Trump That's understands. That's the only tool he now has. Right. 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 I run up a big debt. I fuck everything up. I kill everything I touch. I break the bank. And I declare bankruptcy. And I throw my lawyers at it and make them take half of what right. I owe them. And then I just go do it again because the world is full of idiots who will give me right, money and votes. Right. And he just assumed that the U.S. economy yeah. worked that way. You know, eh, we'll go to a bank. We'll, we'll make it. And I can imagine the people like the, the Chris Christie people who were like selected by Chris Christie, who were competent, who were evil people, but at least competent, looking at him and waiting for the punchline. Right, line. right. Like you're, You've got to be you're fucking kidding me. being serious. You're not really you're, you're this stupid, are you? Joke, right. And he was dead serious. And he's and that's the thing. He's, he's dead serious about everything. And he is that the thing that most people just don't factor into it is how staggeringly stupid Republicans yeah. are and how staggeringly stupid Donald Trump is. And well, how, they how thought simpatico the economy was going wonderfully one day after Donald mm -hmm. Trump got inaugurated right everything's, everything's great now yeah everything's great so all right mm -hmm. news roundup 
Let's do it, baby. Trump plans to name the son of the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia as his next Secretary of Labor, because that's going to work out great. Yeah. Eugene Scalia is a longtime labor attorney and former top lawyer for the Labor Department under George W. Bush. Scalia spent most of his career defending Walmart and other large companies against labor unions and tougher labor protection laws. So yeah. uh, in it's, other words, it's, an, it's another day of the opposite of the person you want in there. It's like right. it's like the coal it's, guy it's, running it's, the EPA. We're just going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the anti-labor right. department. Uh, Mitch McConnell, according to the most recent poll that I've seen, Mitch McConnell is now the most unpopular senator in the country. And you know who doesn't give a shit about that? Mitch McConnell. Right. According to previously redacted federal search warrants, which were released this week, during the 2016 campaign, the FBI believed that then-candidate Trump was deeply involved in the plan to hide hush money payments to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. Those mm -hmm. are women that he had sex with while married to Melania. And then paid to be quiet because he couldn't become president unless they were be quiet. Hush right. money out of mm -hmm. his campaign funds. Yes. Mm -hmm. the and why shouldn't the campaign pay for his hush money? Sure. That's, that's how things because work. Because that's illegal. Oh. The documents <laughs> describe a series of calls, text messages, and emails between Cohen Trump, Hope Hicks, Keith Davidson, an attorney for Stormy Daniels, Dylan Howard, the National Enquirer editor, and David Pecker, the executive uh, who publishes the National Enquirer. They're mm -hmm. all texting each other. And my favorite was uh, Hope Hicks texting Michael Cohen and said, keep praying mm -hmm. about the hush money cover up. Um, and, and let's all remember that the FBI knew this before the election. Yeah. And before the election, the FBI had no problem uh, strutting out on stage and taking a giant shit on Hillary Clinton's campaign. Which was false. Which right? was false. Right. You know, there might be additional email shit. We're going to tell you oh, this wait. 10 no, days before isn't. the election. Yeah. Oh, and but they had all kinds of crap on Donald Trump's campaign, but they all assumed Hillary would win. Therefore, there was no need to intervene to because pull the who pin was, on that. Yeah. Who the hell? And I don't want to be accused of election rigging after that. I don't want this guy, you know, coming to my home and, and saying and, that I cheated him. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we all know who's going to win. So what does it really matter if we don't tell the public that the guy is a Russian asset, a lying, cheating, adultering, thieving, grifting, racist asshole? You know, what will it matter in the end? Because that's the kind of FBI you want for your country. One that not just puts its thumb on the scale, but just sits its fat ass on the scale and, and really digs in there like it's a lazy boy. Trump's now openly racist campaign continued this week by calling uh, for Congresswoman Ilhan Omar to go back to Somalia during a campaign rally while the crowd chanted, send her back. House Democrats have warned that Omar's life is in imminent danger following those chants. And uh, it was kind of funny to watch... Um... Donald Trump lists the members of the so-called squad. Yeah. And when they got to Representative Presley, no one, that sounded like a white name to them. They didn't quite right. know how I whether don't. to boo or not. <laughs> is it, you mean like Elvis Presley? Right. I, is it I, like, I like Elvis? Because Elvis, Elvis yeah. was great. Yeah. yeah. And I also yeah. wanted to give oh. a pat on the back to Cardi B. Yes, Cardi B, the singer, rapper. Uh -huh. uh, she Instagrammed her support for Representative Omar by say by quoting Beyonce. <laughs> You know you that bitch when you cause all this conversation. That is so much the world that uh, our daughters live our in. Our girls are on Instagram. all the, And it is their generation. 11,000 people a day are turning 18 at this stage in history. And they all know who Cardi B is and Beyonce. And, and they, they all understand they, the they conversation. They understand that it is not cool to go along with Donald Trump because he's yeah. a racist. And they don't sugarcoat that no um and i i also wanted to share a reaction that middle child had uh i was watching the news i think it was wednesday night and they had or thursday night excuse me it's thursday night and epstein they had epstein on and they had the video with trump dancing with the, the cheerleaders. cheerleaders and you know all this stuff and mm -hmm. epstein and epstein this epstein this and and middle child went harvey weinstein <laughs> <laughs> And I said, yes. no, this is another one. It's another one. Oh, my God. It's another you mean rich asshole <laughs> yeah. abusing women. And mm -hmm. this guy is into kitty stuff, you know, yeah. 13, 14 year old rape stuff. Yeah. And her eyes rolled back into her head like, 
we got to get rid of all of them. Like, yeah, you know, they, they've, all, just, they've all got to go. They've all she just go. couldn't believe that there was yet another one, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So the, the night is dark and full of dangers. All. Get them mm-hmm. all. Okay. Uh, Donald Trump says he is, quote, not unhappy with the reaction to his racist comments that four congresswomen of color should go back, et cetera, et cetera. And why? Because immediately following those comments, support for Donald Trump among Republicans ticked up by five percentage points. Fucking racist party, Because Republicans party, man. are racist. Yep. So it's a r- racist party. And that racist is- Racist party. That is something that you we have been saying forever. It's been self-evident forever. And I, the people who are in, who get paid to tell the country the truth of what's going on in politics would rather chop their own arms off than right. write that sentence. Well, and if you are just a nice, <clears throat> polite Republican in in the uh, men's in, in the meds club in the men's club smoking a cigar, worrying about marginal tax rates, and that's all right. you care about, you it's time for you true. to leave the Republican Party because they're fucking racist. Right. And that's well, if, bad if you're for a, business. So if, if you're a nice, polite Republican smoking a cigar, then then your understanding of your party comes from David Brooks and the Wall Street. Journal. And that's and that is why David Brooks has a job at the New exactly. York Times. Exactly. The, the circle of life is complete. Exactly. Now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Kellyanne Conway responded to a White House reporter's question, a Jewish White House reporter's question about Trump's racist tweets with what's your ethnicity? And Samantha B said, "Fun fact: She answers the phone that way too." <laughs> <laughs> and the reporter shot back, "What the fuck is your problem? Right. right. What species are you? Yeah. Um, let's talk to your husband about how do you how do you two get along at home? I, I'm not sure I understand how that works. Tell us about your life at home, there, Kellyanne. Tell us about uh, how you're keeping your government taxpayer funded job at the White mm-hmm. House instead of going to work for Trump 2020." Because you want the pension and the health care for your kids. Right. And, and, and what example? And how was, ironic is that? Yeah. Well, and the example Kellyanne Conway is setting for her children is get the money up front. Get the money. Do whatever the man says. You know, that's just goes to the job. If he wants to do horrible things to you, just do them. But yeah. get a lot of money up front. That's that's the morality she's teaching her children. That, let's face it. That's what Jeffrey Epstein's. That's how he justifies it in his own head. I paid them. I paid the 14 year old girls to do that to me. So, right. So it's a it's transaction cool. with a child. Right. Yeah. Everything is that right. way. And, and these people really don't understand morality nope. at all. And they, and this, and, and you can see that this sort of black hole uh, of grifting corruption, awfulness of Donald Trump has drawn the worst people in America to mm-hmm. him. There's, there's no one in the White House. There's no one in the cabinet who isn't awful. And that's not an accident. Well, they that, are all drawn to each other. And that other. article that I, from several weeks ago that I pointed to about the former Trump official book publishers, the guys who design yeah. books for former Trump officials to write. Uh-huh. And, you know, they're always in conversation with people in the Trump White House who are the, working there now. What do I have mm-hmm. to do to get out? And make $3 million off a book so that I don't have right. to work is, anymore. That's my plan. That's the plan. And, and, me, and it's all about, well, if you don't have, if you don't dish the dirt, if you don't get, have really good information, uh, your book won't be a bestseller and then you won't have any money. And we can't help you with that. You've got to really, and and then they have, there, there are people in the White House right now weighing their options to mm-hmm. sell out their boss for money. Or to stay there yeah. and collect all the benefits. Well, and I know we've said this before on this mm-hmm. podcast once or twice, but the the parallels between the collapse of the housing bubble and the collapse of the Trump bubble right. and the collapse of the Bush White House yeah. are eerie because the people on the inside know what right. they're doing is fucking right. awful. They know that they're just criminals who are looting the place. They know it's all going to fall apart. They know they're going to just shit all over that millions of people will suffer. People will die because of their negligence and corruption and they don't care. They're there to loot as much as they can lay their hands on and get out before the place falls down around right. their ears. And that's the cal- that's the only calculation people are making is how much can I stuff in my pockets before I go out the door? I don't want to stuff in so much. I, I, I don't want to stay long enough so that the whole place comes down on top of me. I just want to get out just in time so I can go write a book and talk about how, if they only listen to me, Blue Gal, yeah. 
Yeah. They don't listen to me. And that really, that's the never Trump or business it model. Is. Isn't it is. It is. I, I helped build the Republican Party. I turned this, this, this virus loose on America that's destroying the country that I am supposed to love. And I got out just in time to, to sit on my ass and say, you know what? If only you'd all listen to me. You know what? Uh, if the only the Republican Party listened to me, I, w- I want to make money on both ends of this transaction. Right. And they all and know that Donald Trump those... is is mentally decaying before their very eyes. Oh, right before yep. their eyes. But and, and the consequences in the real world are mm-hmm. horrifying. I'm, for example, the Justice Department, the Bill Barr Donald Trump Justice Department will not bring federal civil rights charges against the New York cop accused of fatally choking Eric Garner. The Trump administration will begin enforcing a new regulation that taxpayer-funded family planning clinics must stop referring women for abortions effective immediately. While under oath, Trump's former campaign communication chief, Jason Miller, admitted to hiring numerous prostitutes and visiting, uh, this is where the adult part of our show comes in, guys, (laughs) hand job massage parlors as recently as a few months ago. A few months ago? Not three years ago, 10 years ago? Well, he's got that card that you punch every time, and he wants to win that. You get that free hoagie, so you know you got to go in. To, you got to go in to win, honey. The House Oversight Committee is expanding an investigation into the use of personal email by Hillary Clinton. No, not Hillary. Clinton. No, 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 Hillary Clinton. Education yes. Secretary Betsy DeVos. This is going to be hilarious. It's going to be hilarious. It's just. It's going to be funny. The only reason I would watch it is just the comedic value. The revenue from Donald Trump's stupid self-destructed tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods turns out is not enough to cover the cost of the bailout of the farmers, nor will it be enough to compensate for all the other industries that are going to be slammed and are currently being crushed under his ongoing stupid trade war. The Pentagon authorized an additional deployment of 1,100 active duty troops and 1,000 Texas National Guard soldiers to the U.S.-Mexico border. That is illegal. It is. Uh, you remember Rand Paul? Remember Stand with Rand? Remember all I, those people? I remember you doing people? posts of Rand Paul running away from things. I did. I had a whole series called uh, Rand Paul running away from things. Civil rights, voting rights, He's still doing uh, it. deficit. Yeah. Apparently, uh, not apparently, he blocked an attempt to pass an extension of what? Some trivial little silly. No, the September 11th Victims Compensation Fund. That's what he's trying and to hold. So, and hostage. one of the men that tra- testified with John Stewart is now dead. Yeah, dead of so cancer. Rand, that yep. the the blood of those people is on Rand Paul's Rand hands. Rand Paul. Mm-hmm. The Trump administration moved to end sil- asylum protections for most Central American migrants. The ACLU is suing to stop that. Support the ACLU. Uh, Donald Trump's consigliere, uh, Bill Barr gave $51,000 to the RNC Senatorial Committee in the months leading up to his Senate confirmation hearings for Attorney General. Now, his contributions all took place over a five-month period, from October of 2018 to February 2019. In the past, he only gave occasionally, once in 2009, once in 2011, twice in 2014, and so on and so forth. Suddenly, he found a reason to give a whole lot of money to the Senate confirmation people uh, he just gave, he gave ten thousand dollars a month. He wrote checks. Yep. Can you imagine being yep. able to write a ten thousand dollar check? I, I, I can't imagine no. that. I can't even imagine no. that. And and it didn't bother him because he's got all the money in the world, and he knew what he was doing. He was buying a job. Yep. And he was buying a job where you get to tell cops that they get to strangle black people and never have to worry about being prosecuted. That's the job Bill Barr he's, wants. He's the most corrupt of. He is. The cabinet, really. Because he knows better. He mm-hmm. knows better. He absolutely knows better. And he's always been this horrible. Yep. And now he's in there. So what are you going to do? Well, you know, the, the uh, well, we'll get to that, won't we? Yeah. Well, NRSC, the National Republican Senatorial Committee, came mm-hmm. out right away and said they refunded 30000 of that money because yeah. they knew once he was nominated, that didn't look good. So it looked real bad. Three fifths of it they refunded. Yeah. <laughs> the three fifths rule. Right. We're keeping the rest the Trump, you know, for expenses. We spent it already. The Trump EPA announced that they would not ban a pesticide associated with developmental disabilities and other health problems in children. And the Trump Agriculture Department has blocked the release of a plan on how to respond to climate change. Furthermore, the Trump administration is trying to break the back of the USDA by forcing 547 employees to either relocate from Washington, D.C. to Kansas City 
or to quit. This is exactly the same tactic they're used in the Department of Interior, where they're forcing 81% of its staff to relocate to west of the Rocky Mountains by next year or quit. This is how you destroy the government. Mm -hmm. You simply insist people move halfway across the continent or they lose their job. Whether their kids are in school or anything else, right? Yeah. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. For no good reason other than Vladimir Putin wants me to destroy the federal mm -hmm. government. And I'll do whatever Vladimir Putin tells me to do. Uh, the House, the Democratic House of Representatives voted to hold Attorney General William Barr and Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, Wilbur, in criminal contempt of Congress. I don't think Wilbur Ross is going to be around to accept that contempt charge. I think he's going to I quit. Think he's, gonna, he's going to be, as, well, as Ten Grain says, he's going to be your fireded because yeah, they got well, to have a he, scapegoat for the census. So. Yeah, he, I slept through the whole part where he was supposed to do that, I think, because he's 190 <laughs> years old and he hasn't been awake no. since the 80s. But yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I was supposed to do something, wasn't I? The House did pass a bill to gradually increase the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2025. A nice, slow, way too slow increase, but an increase in the minimum wage. Uh, it hasn't been raised for decades in 2009. The measure is absolutely going to die at Mitch McConnell's hands in the Senate. So well, and I see the the argument that people are making that the House doesn't get to celebrate the fact that they passed this, but it'll die in the Senate and then say, right. well, we're not gonna do anything in impeachment because it'll die in the Senate. You know, yeah. you if you're passing yeah. bills knowing that Mitch McConnell's gonna stop them anyway, but you're not impeaching because of that, you are not being consistent. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. And that that's the thing that uh, Charlie Pierce, among many others, was like, I don't understand yeah. this. If you're if you're just passing show bills that are going nowhere, why don't you pass some show bills that will actually, you know, throw some light on some very right. serious. Subjects? But I, and I also do understand that they 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 know that no one is paying attention right now. Uh, yeah, because it's not an election year, except for us liberals on Twitter. OK. Two-thirds of That's Americans right. support statehood for Puerto Rico. Isn't that interesting? Uh, the massive ICE raids that Trump had scheduled and the deportations had mostly failed. They failed to happen. You got yeah, – they didn't do didn't them. Do that, was a, didn't, that was a show, you know, show. That was for show. The goddamn, the goddamn contractors were late with the yeah. drywall. Yeah. So what are you going to do? And, no. and the mm -hmm. couple of times that they knocked on doors in New York City, the people knew to ask for a warrant and didn't open their doors. And, yeah. and good for them. At Trump's request, Kellyanne Conway will ignore a House Oversight Committee subpoena and refuse to testify about a government watchdog's findings that she violated the Hatch Act. And this one I threw in just for fun. Uh, the bulwark, you know, uh, Bill Crystal and Charlie Sykes' brand new uh, launched website uh, continues the wretched tradition of Bill Crystal's old publication, The Weekly Standard, with articles like, Can Scott Walker Save the Future of Conservatism? Unbelievable. Uh, I hope Scott Walker is the future of conservatism because I look forward to playing handball against the grave of conservatism for the rest of my life. He was going to be Jeb's running mate, you know. He was. He was the future. That was he the was thing. Gonna, that was going to be know. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to do local news? Yeah. Voting matters. The race for second ward alderman in Springfield, Illinois, came down to one vote, mm -hmm. uh, which triggered a recount, which uncovered Poorly cast votes from the Mary Bryant home, which has um, some people with disabilities living there, mm -hmm. who some of whom uh, had a legally designated helper helping them vote. Uh, but it led to some discrepancies in the ballots because some people didn't know you have to use the same pen, you have to sign mm -hmm. it here, and so forth. And so they were genuinely sort of a training session in democracy as to yeah. how does a person who is disabled who needs help voting legally vote and who cannot get to a polling place as well. These were right. mail-in ballots uh, and it came down to one vote. And um, if, if those people are, and, and the big question that this was city council, I am such a nerd. I listen to city council. I actually oh, yeah. go to city council. Well, meetings it was, it's it really, was important. really exciting news when it comes down to one vote, when an yeah. alderman's seat comes down to one vote. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it, there was a lot of back and forth about what uh, substantial compliance meant. Yeah. If if this person just screwed up and, and put their signature in the wrong place mm -hmm. or used the wrong ink or the person who was supposed to give an oath didn't check the box, right. is that good enough? Right. In my universe, it is. Yeah. You, you gave it a good try. There's no evidence of voter fraud. It's a tiny fraction of votes that this is true of. But the point being, 
a tiny number of votes flipped a seat in the uh, alder in the city council of the state capital of That's Illinois. Right. That's right, and, and and it was a 66 year old veteran of the mm-hmm. uh, alderman's seat mm-hmm. versus a 35 year old who won. Yeah, uh, by one by vote. One vote. By so. One vote. Mm-hmm. Go figure. You want to do the next one or shall I? Yeah. Uh, the CEO of the local Goodwill Industries has resigned. Mm-hmm. Uh, she basically forgot the mission of the organization. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and to her credit, uh, this is a Mrs. Durbin, who is no relation to Dick Durbin. Uh, she was working hard to get Goodwill stores mm-hmm. to turn a profit. Yeah. And making them more attractive to shoppers, making them more like funky used clothing stores that people would want to shop in, and uh, making them retail outlets that people want to want to go to. And, and, and good we for are, her. That's we exciting. Have, we yeah. have a good relationship. There's a a, a restore. It's called. We've we've sent stuff there. Uh, we've gone there to shop for things. It's it's a successful well, restore idea. Restore is Habitat for yeah. Humanity, uh, not I Goodwill. Mean, but, what I mean yes. is the model works really well. It does. Uh, and so she had, uh, in Springfield Goodwill stores, she had turned them around and made them into uh, profit centers. And that's great if you're going to use the profit to help disabled people, which is the mission of Goodwill. Right. Uh, but she forgot that. And uh, when, <laughs> Oops. when the uh, minimum wage increase in Illinois was voted on, and is going to go into effect in January yeah. of 2020. Yeah, period. she decided to do layoffs of disabled people in order to continue to turn a profit at her stores. Yeah, when the mission of the uh, Goodwill Industries is to help disabled people find uh, people with disabilities, excuse me, uh, find work and find uh, training for the job uh, market, and she apparently forgot that. And, she had and so just she taken had done a, now's layoffs uh, in response to the minimum wage increase. Yeah, well, <laughs> she had taken a large salary increase, a large yeah, raise. Yeah, she got she, a raise last year. She yes. made she made a lot of money compared to most people running nonprofits in Springfield. And yep. none of that I have a problem with. It, you know, if a person is is doing the job that the organization is chartered to do, doing it right. well, and 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 increasing and she did mission, turn around those stores, yeah. and she did make them uh, make money for the organization, which should then be not be turned into a salary increase for her, but turned no. around for the mission of the organization. And, and I get it. I get all of it. I, it, she just forgot that it, the profit is not the point. Well, and, and, and when, yeah. and if you have to tighten your belt, you start at the top, you don't right. start at the bottom. Right. Right. So she quit. She's now yeah. you're fired in and she quit. Uh, each week we post to our Facebook page and website and internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This one's close to home. My aunt yeah. has a new cat. Uh, her name is, the kitty's name is Cal. Cal arrived at my aunt's house about two months ago and said, I live here now. <laughs> and uh, so it's Cats not my aunt's that. house. It's yeah. uh, the house where Cal lives. Mm-hmm. Cal uh, seems to be getting along fine with uh, my aunt's other two cats, Tom and Jerry. And of course, all of the cats at Cal's new house, because <laughs> that's what you call it, right? It's <laughs> you, don't need, you can just write Cal's house on the envelope, I think, mm-hmm. and it'll get there. Uh, they all love freshly poured cat food. When you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Cal at our Facebook page and website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com where you can also write to both of us, feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions, letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, postal address information, Patreon, et cetera, et cetera. Both sides don't bumper stickers, all of it. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties think it's been too damn long since you people walked on the moon. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. 
Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DG.